To thee we come, O Lord our God. For you alone are the Holy One, 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Father Almighty, through Jesus Christ, you revealed that the greatest law is love of you and of neighbors. Inflame our hearts with the fire of your holy love, and so strengthen our love for one another. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, the prophet. See, days are coming, oracle of the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke my covenant, though I was their master, oracle of the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, oracle of the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They will no longer teach their friends and relatives, know the Lord, everyone from least to greatest shall know me, oracle of the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity and no longer remember their sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And, and if he calls you seven times in one day and returns to you seven times seven, I am sorry, you should forgive him. A reading from the first letter of St. John the Apostle. If this is love brought to perfection among us, that we have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. And so one who fears is not yet perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love God who he has not seen. This is the commandment we have heard from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. This I command you, love one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from 
the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test him and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him, and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. <laughs> Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus. But he, wanting to justify himself, said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Words taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, at the special synod of the Polish National Catholic Church, held in August of 1906, our first bishop, Franciszek Hodor, established the Feast of Brotherly Love, of which we celebrate today. We read in today's Gospel that a well-educated man, a lawyer, came to Jesus seeking an answer to one of the oldest and most important questions. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Do you know that the question of eternal life has existed ever since man fell in consciousness and favor from God 
in the Garden of Eden, as we read in the book of Genesis? And do you know that throughout the history of the Jewish people, as well as others, man has struggled to make things right with God and return back to that original state? When asked about eternal life, Jesus then asks the lawyer, as he asks each and every single one of us this day, how do you understand the law? The lawyer answered rightly by stating that eternal life is based upon the love of God first and loving one another as we love ourselves. But the lawyer who was testing Jesus took this answer one step farther. He wanted to justify himself. He didn't have a problem with the first commandment of loving God, but the second commandment when he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? The word neighbor is defined in the dictionary as a person who lives near or next door to us. But in today's world, are we not all neighbors? I think Jesus teaching the parable of the Good Samaritan is so appropriate for our world today, for it causes each of us to pause and consider our understanding of what the Lord taught that day. Do you know that the Samaritans were hated by the Orthodox Jews? They were considered unholy and unclean. Travelers would purposely go out of their way to avoid traveling through Samaria and would walk in the wilderness of over 10 miles rather than to go into that area. And yet Jesus uses these unholy and unclean Samaritans to clear up the question of who are our neighbors. I recall seeing a picture some time ago inside, taken from inside a trauma room of a nurse who was African American fighting to save the life of a Klansman who was still dressed in his garb. We have all seen during times of violence, terrorism, and even severe weather occurrences, neighbor helping neighbor and stranger helping stranger. But it's sad to say, my dear brothers and sisters, that we have also, along seeing neighbor helping neighbor and stranger helping stranger, occurrences in which anger, hatred, and division, where man himself has tried to justify himself in committing terrorism and crimes against his fellow man. The images of people, women and children, dead and dying, following chemical attacks on hospitals and schools and neighborhoods in Syria is but one example of people and governments justifying or striving to justify their crimes against humanity. But we don't even need to look overseas or look at other countries, or read in the history of mankind to see crimes committed against one another. We have, including ourselves, at one time or another, tried to justify through our words and through our actions our dislike for our fellow man, for our neighbors, even sad to say, even those that we sometimes worship with. 
I think that this feast of brotherly love can be summed up in the words of Jesus as found in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 13, verse 34, when the Lord teaches. This is a new commandment that I give unto you. Love one another as I have loved you. He did not just say love one another, but he put an additional phrase, as I have loved you. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, may this feast of brotherly love cause all of us to be a little more kinder, a little more understanding, a little more patient, a little more forgiving, and a little more loving for each other and with each other. May we all be a little less critical, a little less judgmental, and a little less fault-finding. How can any one of us be justified before God without, for, without first considering the commonality of God that exists in all of us? May we all take the story of the Good Samaritan to heart. And on this, the Feast of Brotherly Love, when it comes to helping one another in the love that Jesus has shown to us, may we realize that it is only in our faith to the teachings and beliefs in Jesus Christ, as St. Paul declares in Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, that we are justified to inherit eternal life if we love one another as our Lord has loved us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, on this the feast of brotherly love, that our gifts unto God may truly be accepted by Him. May the Lord receive the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of His name. Amen. Let us pray. All loving Father, your Son taught us to love you and our brothers and sisters. May this offering serve to bring us closer to you and to one another. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for forever and ever. The whole Lord be with you. Unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. You have called us to love one another demonstrating harmony among brothers and sisters and friendship among all people. Your word tells us that everyone who loves is begotten of you and knows you. Through the love that we have for each other, may we all join as the Lord's disciples. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus, Christ your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place, for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace and defense and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, Lord. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you, the sacrifice and praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died, for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through christ our lord amen O oh god we ask you to bless to accept 
and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of his love draw them to himself make them joyful and save them he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people at that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family our savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you his almighty father giving thanks to you he blessed it broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat it for this is my body which is given for you In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you shall do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the child's everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offer you, a holy sacrifice in an immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, our departed loved ones, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord and all, who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit.
together with your blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you did say to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy, our saving master. Awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will, May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> 
what shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I only say the word and I shall be
you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, Almighty and merciful Father, may this Eucharist, which is a pledge and sign of your love for us, help us to draw closer to you and to love one another. Help us to forgive the faults of our brothers and sisters, as you have promised to forgive us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may become effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence. But it's a good thing. I do bring to mind that we are scheduled following today's morning mass for a meeting of the Young Men's Society of the Resurrection. I had actually put in letter form last week that it's important for the men of our parish to come together and to be organized because there is much to be done. There has been much done. I want to thank um, our own Paul Bunyan, uh, Bill Girardi, for, uh, for continuing working on the side, taking down trees. Just to give you an idea, when you have a chance, take a quick look. This was something that Bill took upon himself, and it was just for a couple of hours, and to actually view how that whole area is starting to look a lot better. Um, I do bring to mind, also, uh, Teresa, for your diligence in the garden, uh, taking up the weeds, and it is becoming more and more beautiful every time that there is a little something extra that is done. And of course, to Wayne, who is so diligent, and it is because of giving an hour or two a week to the parish outside of worship that we are able to address some of the problems that have not been addressed for many, many years. 
I know talking with a dear parishioner, uh, I th Pat, if you don't mind me bringing up your name, we, we talked about over the years what has happened, I don't know if it's because of the water table, but if you go downstairs in the parish hall, you can see where at the base of the walls, it's all deteriorated. And it was brought to my attention by a couple of people that we are scheduled to have our upcoming Fall Bazaar that will be taking place on October 27th. And what we'd like to do, and this is another reason to call the men together, is to be able to have a game plan, to be able to make the parish hall a little more presentable and to clean up the areas, not only in the parish hall, but also around the church. And so I ask that uh, the men meet for a short period of time after Mass so that this can be addressed. Alice, it is good to see you in church today. Alice went through a, a surgical procedure, and Alice, you are in our prayers and in our thoughts, and we, we pray that everything continues to be good for you. And also, Buddy, um, for Kathy, our, our thoughts and prayers, um, that the good Lord be able to give her peace and be able to help her in the difficulties that she has experienced over the past couple of months. I um, Today, I'm going to be going to Westfield a little bit later. They do have their Dushinki, and just as Father Senior Sotishak and other clergy from our seniorate give support to our parish, it is only right and proper that I would do the same. And so I bring to mind the Dushinki at St. Joseph's Parish. What time? Uh, it, it actually, it starts around noon. It starts around noon. Because I know they have their second Mass at 10.30. Uh, I want to thank Eric for taping, and of course, Bill. You've kind of been back and forth and being uh, producers uh, of, of the tape. And, I, and I've received a couple of phone calls this past week uh, of people saying that they had seen our Masses and that they appreciate, because there are some people who are shut in that are not necessarily in the position of being able to come to Mass on a given Sunday. Uh, Peg, I think I'd like to give the floor to you to, to uh, bring up the, the information about the upcoming uh, a Parish Bazaar, uh, Fall Bazaar, and also making pierogi. As you exit the church, I will be giving you up if I haven't already for helping with the kiddos. <coughs> and uh, we will be meeting for the next three Saturdays, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. I'm trying to get a uh, number for each Saturday, so if you, can, uh, if you haven't already spoken to me, then please do so if you'd like to help. Do not worry if you've not made them before because we have training some new people uh, during that time. And uh, we do have some uh, potato and cheese pierogi left in the freezer uh, from the last time. They're on sale for $5 a dozen. So see me for those if you'd like a bargain. <laughs> and I will, even though know, last Sunday I said this was the last call, I have one more announcement. That is, we have some stuff that was cleaned out of cabinets. It's in the back classroom. And if you would please check and see if there's something that belongs to you or you'd like to take home, because we need to get it out of here before the bazaar. I think that's it for me, Father. Thank you, Peg. I'd like to kind of build on that also. Yes. Bolognese sauce. Okay. Buddy's got bolognese sauce that's still on sale. If you haven't tried it, please do so. It's really great with all kinds of things that you can use the sauce for. Mariana. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Donate to our, we'll have a little raffle table as well as we do all every year. Um, 
I'd like to build on, on one thing. I, I don't know, sometimes the, the parish hall has kind of been like a rabbit hutch, because every time I turn around, there are more paperback books that are being brought over to the church. Uh, I think we probably have one of the biggest libraries of Danielle Steele and uh, Harlequin novels. And uh, yes. Well, Peg, you know, I kind of looked through some of the books and uh, <laughs> But please, do me a favor. I know it's a good intention, but we just keep on multiplying. And, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to thin out. So please, share the Harlequin novels and Daniel Steele and Susan Grafton and all the other writers. Share them with your family and friends. I mean, you know, if you want to bring religious books, that's even better. Uh, this, uh, if you have the thorn birds, well, you may want to consider bringing that. Uh, but seriously, this, this week, uh, the calendar, tomorrow we are scheduled at 7 o'clock to have adult Bible discussion group. On Thursday at 6.30, there is going to be a meeting of the Echo Choir. Uh, as Peg mentioned, next Saturday, pierogi to be made. We're asking between 8 and 8.30 for people to come. Uh, unfortunately, I will be attending along with Shirley Mitlitsky and also with Teresa Bellell, a uh, pre-synodal meeting that will be taking place in our Savior's Parish in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Uh, we're only a few weeks away from the Synod. And we ask that every single week that you please offer prayers that the synod might be a synod in which we might be able to be progressive and to be able to be satisfied once we walk away from the deliberations and the decisions that will be made. Is there any other announcements? Yeah. Yes, Mariana. Could we say prayers, please, Father, for John McGinty, who is one of my husband's best friends who passed away last week? Yes. Anyone else? I had a dear friend that um, suffered a, a cardiac uh, episode. Uh, her blood pressure was over 230, over something like 120. And uh, it took a little while for her to be stabilized. And so I ask that you remember Tosha, Vera, in your prayers. And it's, we also ask that we remember in prayer as we come before the altar, before mm -hmm. concluding, that we pray for the sick, the suffering, the dying, for those among our families, our friends and our relatives that really need God to be in their lives. May it be a united prayer by all of us on this feast of brotherly love. God bless you, and the good Lord watch over all of us. In following the prayer, since today is the feast day of brotherly love, I asked Barbara if she could play the hymn of the Polish National Catholic Church. The first verse will be in Polish, and the last verse will be sung in English. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And 
poor or faithful depart and eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah.